Hey guys, it's Sam here and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to break down the scene that I created and I'm going to share my experiences of creating it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So first and foremost, I'm going to start by adding in the hero object and adding some materials to it in order to get a feel of what it should look like as a final product, which by the way, the hero object in my case is of course another car, <laughs> the Lamborghini Aventador. I like to play with the current iteration of the idea that I have in my mind before I start building the overall scene because I know that the idea will change and testing things early on will help me realize what needs to change faster. For the materials of the car, by the way, I'm using the automotive materials pack provided by Epic, which is a pack available for free on the marketplace and I will link to it in the description box below along with a whole bunch of other things that I'm using, including mega scans. By the way, I'm also going to link to my Instagram page where I'm taking things more seriously now. So I'm going to be posting more of these types of renders over there as well. So definitely make sure to follow and hit the like button for the latest post. I'd really appreciate that. Also, just a quick side note, but I like that when you fly around in the scene in Unreal while holding down the right mouse button, pressing Z and C will change the FOV, the field of view for your camera. It then returns to normal when you let go of the mouse button which is so such a neat trick it helps me prototype very quickly because instead of going back to my camera the scene camera and then trying to change the new fov and then going back and testing things i can just basically use these keys to get a preview in real time of what it will look like so i'm spending some time going back and forth between the car and the sky I'm using the ultra dynamic sky from the marketplace, by the way, which allows me to add in volumetric clouds instantly and they look great out of the box. In this scene, I wanted to go for an overcast, but still keep some of the warm colors in there instead of going all blue, very cold temperature. So I added some fog and increased the amount of clouds covering the sky. The way I do my color grading, and this is by far not the final result, but it's usually by getting my whites and blacks accurate first, because if these two colors look right, I think it will become way easier for me to add colors in between, such as green, orange, or whatever else is going to be in the scene. So once I get the colors of the whiteness in the clouds and the black accents of the car right, I add in some grass to play with the idea of green in the scene. You'll also realize that I'm using a MetaHumans character to scale everything in my world appropriately, which by the way is such a under leveraged use for MetaHumans humans something as cool as that but it's actually crazy how good they are by the way it's like once you zoom in on the characters you realize how detailed they are and it looks great and it's insane how far unreal's ecosystem has come in the past few years next up i'm gonna add in a cube and extend it by quite a lot to act as the wall of my building that i want to put in here i'm gonna start adding some windows a pipe along the ledge of the rooftop and some pipes hanging down the walls by holding down the center of the three axes of the move tool in unreal you automatically get the ability to snap objects to surfaces which also is a very neat trick i'm also gonna add in a garage door and decor the walls with some graffiti decals and the decals are also probably one of the best systems that i've used so far like literally out of the box it just works however <laughs> this is one piece of feedback i'm still trying to figure out how to filter out certain objects from being affected by decals in the scene i haven't been able to find any information on this yet i did see some resources but it didn't really work out for my case and they were for unreal 4 so Maybe it's not compatible anymore, but I have no idea. Once I added in the decals, I went back to modify the car and I realized that the car model I'm using has some wrong material slots because if I assigned a glass material to a mesh, let's say the window, you would assign the same material to certain other meshes, such as the front and tail lights of the car, where I would really like to use a different material. So in order to fix it, I imported the FBX file into Blender and swapped out the material slots for certain objects. Which, by the way, is pretty easy to do. All you have to do is select the mesh you want to modify, go into the materials section in Blender, and remove the current material that's assigned in there. Then you just have to create your own material slot, which you can then refer to on other meshes you want to use the same material for. Going back to Unreal, all that was left over was to further modify the scene and add some additional decals. I really like round details like debris and cracks in the asphalt and then I launched the movie render cube plugin to get a frame by frame video recorded of the results using path tracing and these were the final results so I do want to share some final notes before ending this video I think this wraps up the creative part now I just want to share a little bit of my experiences I think one 
of the main things was after creating the scene, I realized something. I was like, everything that I did was available for free just now, right? Like mega scans, meta human, the textures, the 3D models that I used, everything was for free. So as a, not necessarily a brand new user to Unreal, but someone who has gotten a lot of experience using real-time 3D software in the past, coming into Unreal and then using it, I get a very quick win for absolutely free. So now I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm actually more motivated to continue using Unreal, even though there were clearly some challenges and difficulties along the way because I had to get used to and remap my current knowledge of workflows and shortcuts and stuff like that into what Unreal offers. But realizing how fast and easy it was to get going with Unreal has actually made me realize that I do want to use it for future work as well. And then there were some difficulties as well, like I mentioned before. So for instance, in Unity, when I bring in a FBX into my project, I basically just put it into the folder of the project and it will import the FBX and turn it into a prefab, which is the language in Unity for basically what blueprints are in Unreal. And this prefab will just be one, you will see technically in your project view, one single mesh, and then you can put it into your scene, just drag and drop it in there, and then you will keep and maintain the hierarchical option you had in the DCC tool. But in Unreal, this took a while to get used to because when you import an FBX into Unreal, it imports every single individual mesh as a new object, so to speak, that you can put into your scene, which is also useful, but it took me a while to get my head wrapped around the idea because I was so used to the workflows in Unity about bringing in content to the engine. So I think that wraps up the video pretty much. Um, we covered all the creative part. We covered a few final notes. And I'd love to, by the way, hear what you think of this video, this creation, but also just like if you've used Unreal after a long time or if you've used Unity after a long time, let's say, what do you think of going back in? Like, has it been easy for you? Did you switch tools? Why did you switch tools? I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts on this in the comment section. And once again, just a reminder that I'm going to be posting more stuff over on my Instagram, including stories and reels and photos of the renders that I make. So definitely make sure to follow me there. I've also posted this creation on Instagram already, so make sure to leave a like on that too. I'd really appreciate that. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this. I'm going to see you guys in the comment section, so I'll see you there. Have a good one.